Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Semi Original Guy here, aka Mr. Cannon from Advanced Wars Bioweb, bringing you another live lead game of the day. Today we have Trunit versus Chonkaloni on Caustic Finale. Now, these are two prominent players in the live league. You see them quite often. They are getting there, they are up in the ladder, they are going places, folks. They are going places. Now, we have Rachel today. Now, Rachel, her day to day ability will grant her an extra 1 HP repairs on cities. Uh, when she's occupying them, which can be very, very good for the recovery game and also for potential um, building of walls, you know, so very, very cool. Uh, her co power will allow her to get plus 39% damage on her luck rolls. It's a little unreliable because, as we know, luck is not necessarily reliable. It is just really fun to play with. And her co power, super co power, will launch a area three missile targeting infantry. Um, the most expensive unit and total accumulation of units, I believe. All right, and Andy, no day to day abilities on the Andy, but he does have access to his co power, which is hyper repair, healing his units by two, and he has hyper upgrade, which is healing his units by five, plus one movement and a small firepower bonus, I believe, taking his units up to like 120 percent. All right, so. This should be a very good matchup. Um, I don't normally actually see um, too much Rachel on Caustic Finale, or maybe Andy actually for that matter. But, I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see today, folks, and it's going to be a good one. Alright, so sit tight and let's get into this one. Trunit, top of the board, player number one. As we always know, we are going to skip the Fuse for Turnch, Fuse for Turnch, because the only thing that really happens are our standard infantry builds. Got to get the infantry on the field, and for Caustic Finale, it is pretty straightforward what the capture order should be, for at least the beginning of the game. Both players are going to be going for those neutral properties. And now this is where things start to get a little bit different, you know, because you have options in Caustic Finale. You could go mid, or you could go down to the corners. Um, yeah, so most likely what's going to happen, our players are going to push the corners. They're going to push one of the corners hard and sort of defend on the other corner. Um, but if you do manage to get both corners, it is very, very difficult to gain those corners back because it just gives you so much of a position lead. Uh, it's difficult to go, difficult to go back from that, folks. Difficult to come back. Anyways, the other thing that I tend to see on Caustic Finale is when it comes to this property and this property here, they're highly contested. So if you manage to grab one of those properties first, it can be very effective for you in the long run. So we'll see if either players go for that. Also, uh, the other thing when it comes to Caustic Finale is there is access to the comm tower over in the corner. So we do want to be grabbing one of those comm towers. Most of the time you see players uh, go cap the comm tower and then they just keep an infantry on the comm tower. The other player will also keep an infantry on the comm tower and then you kind of have a deadlock right here on the mountain where no player is able to actually go up and attack until you get some reinforcements in there. Now sometimes people will build, um, you know, like a cheeky recon or something and send them over here and attempt to grab the comm tower, but... Sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't, folks, so we're going to see what happens here. But it does look like Trunit has opened up with an artillery build, which is not necessarily the worst thing um, on Caustic Finale, especially out of this position here, because the artillery is able to go and lock down these two cities right here, actually allowing for um, not only your infantry to push up with the artillery, but also making it very difficult for the opponent to push up into your infantry due to the artillery. So... Let's see what we got going on now. So both players are starting to push over here into the middle. Um, the other thing that I see a lot when it comes to Caustic Finale is whoever kind of pushes out into the middle here first tends to have the upper hand. Um, if you manage to get a tank build first and send your tank forward, then your opponent can build a tank here, but he can't really send it too far forward, right? So whoever gets their tank up there first or more infantry up there first tends to be the one that manages to take those properties. Now we see an early attack over here from Chonkaloni up in the upper left section of the map. We have a two-prong attack on an infantry with tank reinforcements on the way. Actually bringing three infantry up here into the mid, primed and ready to capture that property as well. Um, the other thing that I tend to see when it comes to Cosmic Finale, um, you tend to see these two sides, if left unchecked, 
right? These two sides can come over here and just decimate the HQ. Um, in addition to that, like this side and this side here want to be pushing over here. So this area right here, this area right here, tend to be the areas where there's a lot of fighting mid-game. Alright, so neither player has actually captured their comm tower yet. But it is coming, so we don't have to really worry about that too much. Nice little position over here from Trunet. We have the artillery ready to destroy that guy right here. Tank reinforcement over here. And tank build up here to actually start to defend this. Now, unfortunately, Trinit was unable to acquire that property, giving Chonkaloni a big presence over here. Um, unfortunately, some of those units are injured. So we're going to see what uh, Chonkaloni decides to do in response to that. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Very interesting attack indeed. I like it. I like the attack. This actually severely injures this infantry here while actually having this infantry sit here as a blocker so that this tank cannot actually reach this tank. So, very nice position, very good use of the tank in order to dislodge that infantry there. A nice little attack here, guaranteeing the cap over here on this property. So, very, very cool. Ended up having a base skip for that turn, unfortunately, but... Considering that he managed to take out quite a few infantry, and the artillery is probably way more valuable at the moment than, like, a double infantry build, I would say that that is probably a justified base skip for sure. Interesting. Alright, so Trinit decides to sacrifice both of his infantry and actually go up with this infantry to secure a kill on this guy right here, which is going to be pretty big because this tank is now able to come over here, land a shot from the city onto that tank, taking it down to 5, a trade, and as we know, Rachel will get access to that plus 3 healing, so um, even though she only took 2 damage, I mean she could potentially heal up to 3 if it was a 7-5 trade. Unlikely it would be a 7-5 trade. Manages to take another engagement here against this tank from the city here. Um, in order for this to be successful though, I believe that we are going to have to figure out something with this artillery in order to block this guy. I'm not sure exactly where it could go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, maybe parking it over here onto the forest might be an idea, but we'll see what happens here. Okay, so we do park it on the forest, pretty smart move. We do guarantee a city down here, although this city is interruptible for sure. And true nets, what else are we going to do? Taking out a lone infantry in the mid, very cool. All right. So I still kind of do like Chonkaloon's position a little bit here. I mean, even if we do have two injured tanks on the board, we do have one, two, three, four caps plus the comm tower cap this turn. All right, so we get those caps. Beautiful. And then we move up and strike the infantry up north, double hitting that guy, taking them all the way down to two, bringing the artillery up, sending the tank back to get some heals. Pretty defensive position right here. Artillery is unable to be struck by this tank right here, which is going to be going up to full next turn. Uh, so this tank, for the moment, will be safe. And then we double strike that infantry that was capping the city, and then we move our tank down here to get some heals. And we build another tank. Now, we don't actually... Um, go in and attack this tank. Probably a terrifically smart idea in my opinion because you don't want to be attacking into artillery And even if we did a double attack where the 4 HP attack this uh, Let's say full HP attack this right here That would still end up being a losing engagement because we would actually blast away this guy And then we would still get an attack on the tank down here I believe and even if we didn't get an attack on the tank down here We would just counter attack here and it probably would be fine um yeah. Alright, so let's carry on. We do have access to the comm tower now, so we are sitting at 110% firepower. And we're going up and taking a 9 to 10 engagement here, actually ending up with a 6-5 at the end of it here. And moving the artillery even more forward. Um, hmm. Hmm. Huh, I don't know about that, guys. I don't know about that one. Um, allowing the... 
Well, this is like a really easy attack right here, right? So tanked artillery and plus one day reinforcement from this base means that this is pretty significant overextension, even if there is quite a few units here. And we're getting closer and closer to our co-powers as well. So I don't know, maybe it'll pay off, but you know, only time will tell, folks. We got double artillery up north at the moment, protecting that cap. And it looks like we are going in for an attack on that artillery, taking it all the way down to two. Beautiful. Well, taking it all the way down to one with a four-pronged attack in the south. That's what I'm talking about, folks. It was a little bit adventurous for that guy to go all the way up there, basically just making it so that we lose an artillery in that engagement with no real gain from it, unfortunately. Uh-oh. Okay, hopefully that is back. Let me just check that. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you're clicking buttons and it's just like, woo, things just happen way too quick. Need to, like, put it down there. Oh, no, that's probably fine. Okay, so we are going to continue on here. It is now Trunit's turn. We do have access to the co-power. Um, do we want to use the co-power? Debatable. I don't think that the co-power is going to be, like, overly effective. Yeah, I probably wouldn't pop that co-power yet. Alright, so just uh, reacquiring a position here. We got a pretty safe tank right there. This tank is a little bit more... A little bit more open. Not really anything that can thread it except for a 7 HP tank at the moment. So I think that's probably a pretty safe position. We are um, acquiring a lot of space by placing our tank right there. So it's not really too bad. This corner is looking pretty good at the moment, but I'm still not really a huge fan of the one day reinforcement range right here from this B or this base right here. But the other thing is we also have to worry about this corner down here and this guy right here. So these contested middle cities right here. So this guy, I mean, we have a whole lot of presence right there from green and we have a whole lot of presence here from pink, but a whole lot of dudes right here from green as well. So um, things are going to get dicey here pretty, pretty soon, I believe. Um, opting out of killing that unit in order to actually secure a city. Not necessarily the worst idea, I guess, but I mean, like, we could just interrupt the city. It is kind of forcing an interrupt. And we only have one unit to actually interrupt with. Um, all of the units are actually out of range right now, so if this guy did move in, I mean, they would pretty much get decimated. We do have the tank presence right here, so. Alright, so... Chonkaloni's turn, we do manage to take out one infantry and take a big old hit on one of the tanks for striking it for an 8-5 trade and actually stopping the cap down here. Very, very cool. Alright, so we interrupt the cap down here, or up in the mid as well, and we bring forward all of our infantry. Ooh. And we bust out the classy medium tank, folks. That is beautiful. That's what I'm talking about, Chonk. That's what I'm talking about. It's beautiful. A big, chonky, classy boy right there. That is what you need to destroy infantry. <laughs> you need to overkill them with a medium tank. That's just that's the way it is. <coughs> Cheeky little mech build over here, by the way. Alright, so Trunit wouldn't say that he's out of the woods or out of the game yet, for sure. Going up and doing a little double attack here. Probably would have attacked with the artillery first, but that's just kind of minor. But if we did attack with the artillery first, there is a possibility that, that wouldn't have taken any counter damage, so. And we use the infantry up north to begin fighting. And, <laughs> classy. Classy, classy, folks. Alright. We're in the classy game now, folks. Now, unfortunately... So because this is the second medium tank, I do actually favor the first medium tank being built here. Um, that's going to be able to at least get one kill right here, and then we have three fresh infantry to actually strike the guys over here. Uh, we don't really have a whole lot of reinforcements other than these infantry right now, which I'm not really feeling too hot about. If we did go in and attack, we would maybe be able to KO, KO, and hit. Um, so we're not going to do like a huge amount of damage. Unless we decide to, like, push these guys in or something. I think we probably should have, like, started threatening the cap on that city. Maybe. But, I mean, we're getting into, like, some pretty dangerous territory here with Rachel's co-power about to be popped, so... It's 
gonna be pretty dangerous pretty soon. Um, Caustic Finale is a very small map, so there's not uh, not too many places to hide or bait those missiles. You know what I mean? Um, another medium tank build right now, so that's not too bad. I'm kind of liking that. Although I believe that if the missiles did strike at the moment, um, this is probably the infantry missile right here. Is my thought. Um, unit value is probably hitting right here because of the infantry. I think this corner is pretty much safe. So I think it's hitting here and it's hitting here and then it's maybe hitting here again or something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if uh, the missile actually does pop this turn. Um, if it was up to me, I don't know. Would I go for the missile at the moment? Alright, so we're going for covering fire. Let's see what they hit. Oh, yeah, there's a tank right there. Okay, so that's um, so right there. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So both classy boys are actually perfectly safe at the moment. Um, so unfortunately, I don't really think that was a very good covering fire, to be completely honest. I probably would have waited on the covering fire a little bit um, until our units got in a better position to actually follow up the attacks. Um, cause Andy, you know, all he's gonna do is he's gonna heal these guys and he's gonna heal these guys. And actually moving the artillery a little bit forward here is kinda risky as well. Um, we are gonna be able to first strike that guy and that's about it. We'll just be able to get one strike. So he might actually have to pull them back. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's Chonkaloni's turn over here on day 12. Alright, now well, this is classic Andy right here, you know, if you do see those engagements that you can take before you pop your co-power, um, definitely take them. Um, and are there any other engagements that we can take before? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, not particularly, I guess, doesn't really look like there's much. Yeah, okay, so hyper upgrade it is then. Now, we could be super cheeky and actually destroy this infantry and then get a first strike on this medium tank. However, it does black box uh, backed up by an artillery, so um, maybe not the most advantageous attack to do, but he's going to go do it. Okay, that medium tank is... Well, I mean, if, if Truna decides to base skip on this property, this medium tank is dead in the water, unfortunately, because we will have a two strike here, but he will have to back up um, this side by building something big out of here, like possibly even another medium tank, like one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, that is actually not a direct line of reinforcement there due to the forest tile right there. So this is gonna get a little bit dicey. It's going to get dicey pretty soon here, folks. Um, Trinit's going to have to come up with a pretty good plan in order to get rid of those medium tanks. Otherwise, they're going to run amok. Now, Trinit is actually ahead right now when it comes to total amount of units. Um, but it is Chonkaloni's turn, so let's see if he manages to pull ahead here. Alright, so doesn't even have to retreat here. Does find a way to break through and actually do several attacks onto that artillery unit right there. So, pushing that guy up. So far, definitely an overextension. It brings both of the artillerists forward. Building a third classy boy, Chonky. That's what I'm talking about right now. This is beautiful. This is what you want to do. You want to get the medium tanks on the field. Beautiful. All right. So double hitting the infantry, triple hitting the infantry, going in and taking a big old strike on the artillery sitting here, vulnerable on a uh, bridge. Terrain right there, zero star, star terrain, massive damage right there. Unfortunately, we are blocked off or are covered by a tank and a, another artillery. And we do have this cheeky mech right here, which is um, going to be very troublesome because, it, well, I mean, the infantry could probably come in and dislodge this guy right here, but the mech could definitely dislodge it. Uh, most likely what's probably going to happen, though, is this infantry is probably going to go back to get healed. Maybe mech move here. Uh, take a shot on this. Um, we might even use the art. Actually, you know what I would do? I would probably use artillery infantry to dislodge this right here. Bring this guy back. Go in with the mech. Take a strike at this. Uh, double strike it with this one right here. Coming all the way back. And this tile would be open. So then we strike the tank. We move off with this guy onto the city. We strike the tank. Most likely taking that guy completely out. Then moving in. 
with a, another infantry to either strike this guy and come, take him completely out or severely injure this one. Um, but like I said, it's turn to turn. Completely depends on what the next unit build is going to be from the north. Um, I'm expecting Classy Boy to be completely honest, but we will see. Down south, things are looking very, very good for Trunet, though. We have managed to eliminate quite a few of the threats over here and are actually about to flip a property in his favor. So, very, very dangerous territory here. Um, having this amount of units really close to your HQ and your base over here is pretty dangerous as well. However, for all the presence that he has here, um, Chom Colony also has a lot of presence in the map here. Now, unfortunately, this infantry down here in the south is being completely decimated by a tank and a um, lone infantry down here. But we do have protection for the comm tower for the time being. Now, let's see what Trina decides to build. So he built a recon. Recon artillery. Okay, so he's going heavy on the artillery. heavy on the artillery. I don't really know if artillery is like the way to go up here. I think we probably needed to build another another big unit. I don't know. It's possible. Okay, this is live, right? And I mean, the time is ticking down. We're at 405 and 642 for these guys, but there are definitely some possibilities for attacking right here. I mean, if we destroyed this infantry and move this tank up here, boom, that medium tank is gone and we force another base lock over here. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Oh so, yeah, we're going for the medium tank. Classy boy down. Alright, so we take a whole bunch of attacks. Not quite the way that I would do it, but I mean this is super effective either way. We managed to take out a bunch of guys. So beautiful. So there's a huge threat here and there's a huge threat here. Both guys are threatening on opposite side of the maps right now, so we are gonna see what happens. Although the fact that there is a classy medium tank in the face of this base over here, I wouldn't be feeling too hot about that one, guys. Although if we do pop our luck roll, uh, there's potential for a huge amount of damage there. Actually, the artillery plus tank strike over here could potentially destroy that medium tank. So, you know, if uh, Truna is feeling the rolls, he could definitely roll baby roll. Alright, but self attack is looking pretty good. Unfortunately, a lot of these units are fairly injured. But, the threat is there. The threat is there. Yeah, definitely keep that, um, <laughs> keep this guy stationary, because we're going to be needing a full HP tank very, very soon. Um, honestly, if we were gonna go for this attack, I probably just rolled, would have rolled the luck roll, man. To be completely honest, because like covering fire is not really gonna be super effective against Andy if he's gonna just be using his hyper repair right afterwards. But if you can use that luck and if you can get those KOs, you know maybe, maybe that would have been good. But say Lavi, you know what? Everybody has a different way of attacks, and you know honestly, that's why they have menus at restaurants, folks. Some people like steak, some people like spaghetti. Alright. Double medium tanks in the face of this property right here. That is pretty dangerous stuff. Um, Trunet, not really in range of the stinky Neo tank either, so we're not going to be able to pop a Neo tank over there to hold that property at the moment either. Aside from that nice little attack over here, not really pushing up too far, but we do have um, potential to dislodge, especially with the luck. Coming up here pretty soon. Uh, so, like, I mean, like, uh, luck roll. I mean, you probably wouldn't even need a luck roll to take this guy out, but we would definitely get an attack on this guy right here. But, um, tank reinforcement would be pretty risky to go in and attack into that. Defensive position is probably the way to go at the moment. Especially with the medium tank. <laughs> Especially with the medium tank. We got another one, guys! Oh my god, another medium tank in the fray. Um, unfortunately, this medium tank is going to be fighting against three artillery down here, so it's going to be very difficult for that guy to uh, get anything done. Unfortunately, two of our medium tanks up there just took massive damage, and we get the covering fire. Yowzers. Double missile up here. Devastation to the maximum. Ouchies. And then we get a missile down here, too, so this medium tank actually got hit by the missile. 
unfortunate. Truna is now in a very good position. Um, in order to push up and base lock that, or already lock that base with the medium tank. Dicey. Very, very nice base lock, actually, with that. Um, whether or not it's going to hold for a significant amount of time is another story, but it is definitely a nice one. Definitely a nice one. John Glody now at 22 units to 25, although it is his turn, and we are getting very, very close to hyper... Br up bleh, hyper upgrade. That's the one we need, folks. All right, sacrificing units right now. We are trying our darndest to get the hyper upgrade, but we do have a lot of attacks, and we are able to do it quite successfully. Ooh, medium tanks to heal all the way back up to eight, and this medium tank is ready to strike this guy if he wants. Probably from the uh, the city would be the uh, optimum place to do it from, but we'll see. Mech actually getting some value here, attacking this. Uh, Tank sitting here on the base right now, so it's very nice. Um, I'm actually we have potential for a base lock up here too because we can. Oh, you know what? Actually, this infantry goes up and takes out that, and then we have a double, double arty lock. Even if they're at six HP, that's double arty lock that property right there. Beautiful. I wouldn't have put it right there though. I probably would have put it up there, <laughs> but not really a big deal. Um. This one's a little less safe because we have this right here. I mean, this guy could attack this, no problem. But this guy has to make a choice, right? He has to attack the medium tank or this. Medium tank or this. Medium tank or this. Too many choices, man. Too many choices. Oh my god, I'm gonna be sweating. Oh, double capping on the <laughs> the port and the property and this property right here in the middle. Oh, you do not want your port to be capped in Caustic Finale. That is just asking for the dreaded battleship to be built in your face. And that is the last thing you want to have on Caustic Finale. Trust me, I have done it many times to people, and every single time I do it, I feel a little bit dirty. A little bit dirty indeed. Alright, Trunit managing to do a little bit of an attack here. Manages to take uh, this guy down to one. Putting the arty on the HQs, not too bad. We got 18k in the bank. Gotta pump out a classy medium tank out of that probably. It like it has to be done at the at this moment. Yeah. Okay, we got the classy medium tank. Got an infantry double infantry build down south. No single infantry build down south. That's all the money that we got right now. Alright, very nice. Um true or chunk loading now, about to flip a bunch of properties. Goes in for his attacks actually before. And striking this guy down. Do we have a... Oh, we don't have any way to actually dislodge this at the moment. We can attack this, but there's no other possibility to dislodge that at the moment. Oh, big old attack. Big old attack. Alright, that HQ is looking very vulnerable at the moment. Um, but Truna, definitely not out of the game yet, as we do have many units over here, but I swear we have got to be abusing those luck rolls pretty soon here. Luck is basically the only thing that's going to be saving us in this fight. Uh, we are starting to cap one of the bases right here, which is highly dangerous. Um, we do have potential for breaking. Um, the artillery could break this, leading to the medium tank going in and interrupting it. However, the medium tank would be destroyed in the event that that does happen, which could potentially lead to an HQ capture. Uh, so, I mean, both players are on the clock right now. It really just depends on who manages to get the rolls in order to get those HQs at the moment. So, Chonkaloni's turn. Uh, Trunet, very nice turn. Double medium tank over here, definitely securing this. What we really need to do is Ch or Trunet at the moment is destroy this tank or this infantry and either park a medium tank directly on that HQ or get something right beside the HQ. That is what we definitely need to be doing right now. Oh, we are unable to get the KO here with the medium tank. So this infantry is going to have to go right here. Oh, which could actually result in a possible HQ cap beginning this turn completely surrounded by tanks. Oh lord, oh lord, things are looking crazy. The only thing that is going to save us at the moment is definitely a luck roll. We have got to be busting out a big fat luck roll. Alright, lucky last. Now we do have potential here, we can double shot this 
tank right here if we get the luck rolls and then move the medium tank right here to KO this guy or at least do mass damage. No. No. We did not do it. We didn't do it in the way that it probably should have been done. Unfortunate. Oh well. You know, that's the way it is. That is the way of Caustic Finale, folks. Things get dire so quick. And especially when it comes to live, you know, you only have minutes to make your turn. Sometimes you don't make the right decisions. Sometimes you make the best decisions of your life. Now, it is actually debatable whether or not this would have been successful with 7 HP versus the tank here. But I do believe this is probably at least like base at least like a 50 to 60 percent roll normally so with the luck it probably could have been like way way higher we definitely would have gotten another luck roll with this and definitely could have stopped the cap right here i believe wholeheartedly that would have been possible and then we would have actually gained this property so now well is what it is folks is what it is i thought that was a fantastic match beautiful match Everybody enjoys a good caustic finale. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. And if you did, consider leaving a like, comment, or subscribe. We're going to be having more live league games casted in the future. Hopefully daily if I can pull it off, folks. So it's going to be a good time. Until next time, folks, take care of yourselves. Enjoy your day. And bye-bye for now.